anybody that's a frequent flyer of conspiracy theory videos and uh, you know the Joe Rogan podcast and things like that things of that nature may find this interesting I'm sure some of you have heard of the CIA's website and the Freedom of Information Act at this point and that's pretty easy to find that's right on you can just Google CIA and it'll come up it's the first website to come up CIA.gov and generally speaking when it's .gov it's a pretty legitimate site meaning it's run by the government if you go to their site you can scroll down to the very bottom down to resources here you can see the Freedom of Information Act so you can see once we click on that it gives us a bit of a breakdown on kind of the existence of it, why it exists. There's a search bar and what you can do with that search bar you can look up anything that you want, anything that you please. Now I saw an interesting comment on a YouTube video that told me to look up out-of-body experiences. I got other things relating to the establishment of human body sciences. Now generally when you think of that you're probably thinking about kinesiology, physiology, these sorts of things. Of course, we're on the CIA's website. Located this 65 page document. Now, I'm sure there's many interesting documents on the CIA's website. In fact, I have no doubt about that. Kind of like a Google search bar for CIA documents. So, this document, a breakdown on how it all started. They give a, an order of major events, policies based around the, the research, where it all started, and where they're at now. And this is a 65 page document and yes there's blacked out boxes here and there I'm not gonna go through and read everything but I'm gonna give a bit of a breakdown on what they're saying there is a lot to go through I'm gonna link this below but uh, if you want to read it feel free here's a chronology of major events a newspaper article came out and it said a 12 year old boy was able to read written material just by touching it. So you could touch a book and you could read it. Um, and then another journal, the Science Journal, researched this topic and this person of interest specifically. And whoever wrote that article and was writing in that journal seemed to conclude that, yeah, it was legitimate. It moved on from individuals and journals to university professors and scientists to validate the authenticity of these things. Scientists started researching this. They researched eyeless sight. Here's the Soviets also investigated what they called dermo-optic perception. And once they figured that out, the Chinese scientists started dubbing this as something called extraordinary human body functions, EHBF. In the Western world, the Scientists over here, the scientists and the researchers over here, we're calling it parapsychological or psychoenergetic studies. Theoretically, this would be a relatively rudimentary study due to the fact that it's from 1982, and so we have to bear that in mind when we're looking at this and kind of wonder, well, what's happening now, what's happening today? Well, soon after they started, they realized there was a lot of uh, interest growing on this subject and so they held a symposium the first science symposium on the extraordinary function of the human body it's held in shanghai participants from over 20 colleges and research institutes were in attendance along with 14 children purported to possess ehbf skills which they demonstrated at the conference as a result of these demonstrations a number of observers returned to their institutes to set up research programs and rigorous investigations began. The first presentation of this kind of research in anywhere outside of China, supposedly, was the 24th Annual Convention of the Parapsychological Association. This was held at Syracuse University in New York. John Hopkins University in Baltimore, Maryland gave an overview of the results. In October 1981, the State Science Commission set up a special group to study EHBF phenomena. In 1982, the Chinese Academy of Sciences sponsored a public hearing. That in 1981, American and Canadian parapsychologists met with Chinese researchers in these 
in these areas of study. But here we have a timeline of the the events that took place. This appears to be a list of the institutes that were working around this. Here we find some descriptions of the experiments that were taking place. Note some of the detectors that were used, such as x-ray, nuclear motion, and photographic film, photoelectric tubes, thermoluminescence, dosimeters, and biological detectors. This whole part of the American and Canadian psychologists going to China is titled the East-West Exchange. They've provided to the people that were researching this, and this is going over how North American scientists went to China to discuss with their researchers and their educators exactly what was going on and figure out what they've been doing and how far they've gotten, whether or not they're findings are legit. We provided a list of the institutes and the research academies that took place in these these gatherings, these get-togethers, or whatever was going on at these research facilities. Generally speaking, the observations reported are in accord with what has been reported in the West. Extraordinary human body functions do exist. In addition to the skin reading phenomena first observed, other classical psychoenergetic functions such as telepathy, clairvoyance, and psychokinesis. There's a possibility of these EHBF functions being universally inherent, meaning all humans could potentially possess these abilities. The field has high level scientific and political support. There's active research being pursued at national level space science, Institute of Space Medico Engineering and military, unnamed Air Force Institute laboratories, in addition to major universities and Chinese Academy of Science laboratories. This section is focused on exceptional human body radiation. What they're doing to test for these things, what they're using. Again, those films I mentioned before, the x-ray films, thermoluminescent films, also use things called biodetectors and light quanta detectors. These experiments demonstrated that when the subjects who possessed exceptional vision correctly recognized the characters, they simultaneously produced exposures of the film placed near the characters, as well as other unusual effects. Occasionally, they were even able to project images of the characters onto nearby film. They examined these projected images on these films, and they discovered that the vertical distribution of silver grains indicated that the influence of unknown radiation is similar to the effect of visible light. But the penetration of this unknown radiation is somewhat deeper into the emulsion. Through inspection of the container used for the film test of the testing methods and of the brush and paper, excluded known types of radiation, fluorescence, chemical interactions, light leaks, or radioactive decay from producing the observed effect. Conclusions with those experiments, those tests, are this unknown radiation when compared to known types of physical radiation manifests a more complicated spatial distribution. The radiation has unusual penetrating power and selectivity. Only when near the recognized target characters does it produce effects resembling the physical effects of visible light, while in other areas its impact is near zero. And they even include diagrams for these tests, which help narrow down what they're really trying to get at. These individuals can influence thermoluminescent film placed near the characters. Normal people can also elicit responses as well, just not as much as these exceptional individuals. When these exceptional individuals are not exerting their abilities, they are basically in a normalized state. They're not any different than other people. Exceptional vision individuals can emit a strong unknown radiation and that normal people also emit this radiation, however, a much, much lower quantity of that. See what they've done with a the biodetector, they go on to describe that. And again, the light quanta detectors, basically they emit an intense amount of energy that's similar to visible light, 
but not quite the same. All of these tests are concluding the same thing. That yes, there, there is energy transfer taking place. There is stuff going on, but we don't know what. Here we see some actual pictures or depictions of what was going on. Somebody projected the number 920 onto x-ray film. They were also able to transcribe a bit of a mess. See some really interesting graphs. Well, number one here is a control film. Number two is an ordinary person. Number three is somebody with these disability during a normal conditioning. They're not exerting their abilities. Number five is where it gets super interesting. This exceptional vision person while exercising the ability. And we see that that is many times greater than either control or people not possessive of these abilities. Here it gives the experiment with the biodetector system. A is the control, B is the concentration of attention of one of these individuals, C is, a, is brain cell flashes, D is release, E would be the removal of the hand. And so it tapered off. I'm not sure exactly what they're measuring in that one. Second graph depicting the same thing. Here is the light quanta detector system, the design of that. And here is an impulse amplitude spectrum of unknown human body radiation. This final section is basically just an overview of everything, possibly the weirdest part of this document. It's one of the conclusions. The test results are mutually confirmatory and supplement one another. The first steps have proven that in the natural world there exists an unknown radiation that is reciprocally connected with the life process. Compared with generally known physical radiation, this radiation has a more complex distribution in space and time. Probably my favorite blurb of this whole thing. So they go on to say, some researchers reported, apart from recognizing characters with the ear, the human body may possess many other extraordinary functions. Researchers have searched after and observed such functions as psychokinesis, teleportation, and the like. Recording the equivalence time curve of moving the hands of a watch by the extraordinary function of the human body and observing the possibility of transferring a specimen out of a container from a hole smaller than the specimen itself by this function are two examples. Some people who have these extraordinary functions can perceive near-infrared light. They could also distinguish the north and south pole of a magnet and can tell north from south via their extraordinary functions. Goes on to say that we need to research this more to have any definitive scientific conclusions. Definitely some weird stuff on this CIA site. Anyways, let me know what you thought. 